Hello and welcome to this episode of the Be Free podcast and I am very excited to continue this conversation um, with the beautiful Kimmy because Kimmy and I have been rifting, chatting, all things joyful living, life, social media, sexuality, pleasure, <laughs> Uh, all the things really before we hit record so um, <laughs> I'm sure we've still got lots of juicy things to share with you um, so welcome Kimmy my beautiful friend thank you so much for having me I'm so excited you made me buzz in before you hit record <laughs> I'm buzzing for it thank you for having me my love not at all so I'm yeah I'm really excited to have Kimmy here I love Kimmy because she's a very kindred spirit and um, this is one of the things we were just chatting about actually is that we like to do lots of different things and we are constantly evolving and we are constantly changing and we met probably I don't know how long ago is that two years ago two years yeah yeah two years ago maybe um I was a speaker about manifestation and vision boards I think it was it was yeah um a business networking event and um met Kimmy there for the first time and then we've just kind of stayed in touch ever since so do you want to do a little intro Kimmy to who you are and all that things Yes, I would be more than welcome to. So I am Kimmy. I am, well, I was the owner of Strength Within, but we've recently changed from Strength Within to Joyfully Living. I live in Bonnie, Scotland, where it is absolutely dinging it down a vein right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a mum to two teenage daughters at the minute. I have a fiance, we have two dogs, two cats, and an awesome life. So yeah, I'm so excited to be here and I'm so grateful to have met you in this life, even though I believe we met each other in a previous life before. <laughs> I'm so honoured to be here <laughs> with you, my love. So thank you so much for having me. Not at all. No, I love everything that you kind of create and put out into the world. And yeah, I met you when you were working with Strength Within, um, that element of your business. And now um I guess that's evolved but what kind of drew you like obviously you've mentioned that you're working more in this um supporting people and finding joy what Mm -hmm. drew you to create your own business because I know you haven't always kind of been an entrepreneur so what Mm -hmm. kind of drew you to that yeah so strength within initially was the first thing that I created and that was based off my off of my own mental health story. So my mental health years ago took a turn for the worse and I was in a really dark place. I find spirituality, I find sort of hope and faith, holistic living, but I couldn't find a community that catered for my anxious brain, body and mind. I, there wasn't anything. So I thought once I got better, once I learned more, once I basically went down that rabbit hole of learning everything yeah. I was learning, And then I started training to become a coach and a journal therapist. And then I thought, why not create something that I needed during that time of struggle? So that's where Strength Within came from. And it has sort of progressed into this new entity type of thing. It's now its own kind of little baby as such. It's now joyfully living, but it's still under like the strength community kind of umbrella. But it's just a new, it's a new name, a new mission, mindset, values all of the things but again it's still in that kind of positive well-being wellness bracket of what strength within was yeah, yeah I love that and then you know I think it just shows that evolution of self as well from that strength within you know even the, the names of your business kind of demonstrate <laughs> that you know finding that strength within and I think that yeah. is so powerful and necessary for anybody who is facing any challenges around mental health mm-hmm. to recognize that that is possible that there is strength within oh a million percent and I think as well as from my own sort of journey with my mental health at the very beginning that's what I had to find Mm -hmm. I had to find that strength to continue on because there was days I didn't want to be here there was days that was so freaking dark so it was finding that strength within to continue on continuously and now I've gotten to a point where I freaking know how strong I am now I'm focusing on joy because let's yeah. face it, what is life without joy? <laughs> so it is, it has been a growth, an evolution, a transformation. And 
it's amazing to look back on the journey that mm. it basically has been and it's beautiful to speak about it as well because we spoke about it a few times mm. but it is yeah it's been one hell of a journey <laughs> yeah, absolutely absolutely and I think it's great for people you know when we were speaking about inspiration and hope earlier it's great for people to be able to follow others on that journey to see what's possible um you know and honestly my mental health journey like that's what got me starting my business as well um and then obviously that took a little bit of a dip and then it's coming up again and you know just recognizing that um there are these tools that we can utilize we can channel that strength within um kind of jumping about a little bit but when you were in that dark place and you mentioned kind of spirituality but what was it that you'd say were like the main tools that you used to support yourself at that point so I got into journaling I realized because I think when you are in a really dark place your thoughts and feelings consume you so mm -hmm. they take over your mind which then takes over your body which takes over everything because your body it's, it's physical it allows us to move throughout this world so for me I started journaling which allowed me to get the thoughts out of my head onto a piece of paper and they were scary yeah. and they were you know some were embarrassing some were exhausting some were triggering but getting them out of my head into a piece of paper finding spirituality so crystals meditation things like that I then started shifting my perspective I then started mm -hmm. seeing these thoughts and feelings is sort of like waves in the sea they would come they would go I don't have to attach anything to them yeah just allow them to be whatever they're going to be so for me journaling changed everything journaling was the first thing that I started and then started getting into crystals and oils and oracle cards and things like that yeah. things that give us oh, guidance the kids and <laughs> <laughs> so it was but journaling journaling was initially the, the first everything I used to do morning pages and believe it or not it was an advert on YouTube that came up when I was watching something on YouTube okay. it was an advert about doing morning pages and I was like what's morning pages and then that that was it that was the, the start of something beautiful yeah. mm -hmm. have you yeah. ever worked through Julia Cameron's book The Artist's Way no, I keep meaning to do it because everyone talks about it, but I haven't, mm. I haven't done it yet. Would you we'll have a copy? It? I'll have to lend it. I'll have to lend it to you, or I can I do it together. It's it's quite it's challenging. It's a challenging process because you are doing your morning pages every day, but there's other things. Yeah. But I think you would, I think you would get a lot from it. I do love a challenge, so <laughs> yeah. I'm on it. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Um. So you moved through that journey with strength within and now you're um created your business around joyfully living um what how would you describe this to people what is joy like and why is it so important so while well, the definition of joy is a feeling of pleasure and happiness now who doesn't want to feel pleasure and happiness like let's face it we all want to feel pleasured and happy but joyfully living is a mindset it is a choice so changing from strength within that was focused around mental health as such and well-being focusing more from the problem to the solution mm -hmm. I fully believe that joyfully living is a mindset that will give you the solution that you need to conquer anything in your life mm -hmm. because we can't feel happy and sad at the same time but we can feel joyful and sad at the same time so joy it is a choice basically mm -hmm. happiness is an outward expression it is an elation it is you know something makes us happy and we will show it where it's been scientifically proven that joy is an inward peace and contentment mm -hmm. and your body it's i've been doing psychology and your body will physically change when you feel joy mm -hmm. from how you're from how you smile to how you hold yourself and that is an inward thing but i think moving from the problem to the solution is it's been such a beautiful transition because it's it's going with me it's going with my life as such and it's teaching people what joy is or basically inviting them 
to start that conversation with themselves because many people will assume what brings them joy is what makes them happy and I love like I said to you I love, I love deep picking things I'm like yeah. this, 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 this is this joy so it is it's a mindset it is a lifestyle it is a way of life and it is available to to us all so mm -hmm. it is yeah it's yeah need to get the conversation started <laughs> definitely definitely and I think um like you know I know we mentioned this and you'd done a poll on your social medias and we spoke about this recently was that you know you had asked the question like can you experience joy what was the question you asked like can you experience joy and sadness at the same time or something or yeah it was a joy or healing or grief yeah something along those yeah. lines can you can they coexist basically that was the question yeah mm -hmm. yeah and I think you said that I was like the only person that had said yeah, yes I, I out of the 15 people who voted, you were the only person who said yes. And that made me really sad. That mm. made me realize that there is a need for this conversation because, you know, my joy journey, moving from strength within to joyfully living happened after my dad's passing, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, you know, many people thought I was insane <laughs> when I was doing all of these things after dad passed. But that was me focusing on joy. That was me choosing joy. I felt sadness. I felt grief. I was healing. But I was still actively and intentionally choosing joy every single day. Mm -hmm. And it shifted how I dealt with life after losing someone. It completely shifted everything. My relationships, how I showed up every single day. So they can coexist. And this is the thing where I think life is genuine. Life can genuinely be really difficult. Yeah. We go through this roller coaster. Sometimes, you know, we're really high. Sometimes we're really low. We can't control what happens in our life. We can't control the bad stuff from coming or all of these external things, but we can control how we react to it. So joyfully living is that mindset where you actively choose how you react to, to life. And it makes life a lot easier. Yeah. Definitely a lot easier than fighting it. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And I wholeheartedly agree. And as I've worked through this healing journey this past year, that has been something that I have been really focused on that, um, you know, joy is one of my core values and just focusing more around that value led life. And despite challenges or, you know, whatever, you can get really stuck in that cycle. Mm -hmm. But there is opportunities to experience joy or to still have that sense of purpose and um yeah mm -hmm. I think I um studied acceptance and commitment therapy as well and it. It, it's very much around that as well you know you can have all the shit of the day <laughs> happening and going on right? <laughs> yeah. you can still live a life that is meaningful that is purposeful that you can experience joy despite that exactly exactly and I think it's not something we were necessarily taught in school it's no. not something that I believe that we were taught like even when you talk to people about joy joy is not something that people understand very much because we wasn't taught how to feel joyful or be joyful as such so it is definitely something that I think needs to the conversations need to happen now because life for many people is very very heavy so mm -hmm. if you know that you act actively have that choice to choose joy mm -hmm. then it's again it's that mindset it's that lifestyle it's training yourself I always say it's the path to enlightenment mm -hmm. it's like the alchemist path you know when you actively decide that yeah. you're going to choose joy regardless then it's again you become the student as such of of the world and how you basically navigate the world and I think it's a beautiful journey and watching people go through it now now that I've moved from yeah. it's beautiful to see the difference in people and what comes through and again when people are like like I said we can't stop the bad stuff but when people are dealt hard cards or tough cards when they know that they can actively choose joy what that means for them and feels for them changes how they react to the, the cards that they've been dealt and that's beautiful amazing <laughs> uh, love love this conversation so for anyone that's listening do you have like an exercise or anything that could support people in beginning to connect in with that to connect in with joy living a joyful <laughs> life yeah so there is a few ones I think like so there's ones if you love visualization there is an awesome one that you can do I always think when you're creating <clears throat> excuse me when you're creating a healthy habit attaching it to something you already do is mm -hmm. a really way to trick your brain into into learning something basically yeah. so one that I love to do in the morning I do it every single morning is attaching physically visualizing myself putting in joy 
basically like if you put on your clothes you're putting on joy so I do it when I'm drinking my tea when I'm having my tea in the morning I visualize that's joy I am activating my joy by drinking my tea so attach it in that choice of choosing joy to something that you already do in the morning is really, really beneficial. There's also another one. So I've been doing, I've been studying psychology and we had to study different people in different areas of the world. And people in third world countries are examples of how joy is. Mm. So they have three core values. They live in crappy conditions. They have crappy health. But yet they are joyful, they are positive, and they are full of gratitude, regardless of their external circumstances. So focus on those three things, being joyful, being positive, and gratitude every single day can help you actively choose joy. And again, I'm using them as an example because they are so happy and so positive, even when they're physically ill. They will be grateful for food. They will be grateful for everything. So those three things are core values that you can activate in your own life and focus on. You can do that, obviously, through like journaling and mindset work and things like that. So those two things, visualize yourself putting on joy. Yeah. Mr. T does it when he's in the shower. So when yeah. he's having a shower, it is, you know, the shower is the, is the joy falling. On I love it. it. Do it. I do it with my tea in the morning. You can do it. You know, I've got a client who does it when she puts on her clothes. She mm-hmm. physically says that she's putting on joy. It's just an activation. And when it com- becomes a habit, your brain will then attach it to something else. So I instantly know my cup of tea helps me activate my joy every single morning and definitely journey through the, the core values of, you know, joyful, what that means and is to you, positivity and, and gratitude, because those three things are, yeah and change your life <laughs> amazing Woo! cool yes. <laughs> um yes uh, i'm thinking about that and how i'm going to put on my joy later um and i want to know now you have to message yeah. me and tell me <laughs> i'll be putting it. on loads of joy i'll be like with my oils this my is lips. my joy this is it <laughs> um Catch it. Yeah, I love it. So I know like you mentioned journaling a couple of times there and it's something that I do every day that has changed my life as well. And um, for people that don't journal regularly or because I know like I, I mean I speak to a lot of people who like like to buy journals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like like to buy a pretty journal, but then they're like, I don't really know don't quite know what, what to do, do with it. Um yeah what would you say like is there what benefits might the experience that would spur them on or what where could they get started so there is a few things so like journaling is this so once I started journaling it was more like diary keeping in the sense of I was documenting my day my triggers what Mm. made me feel good what made me feel crap so it was sort of like diary keeping but there's been scientific proof that journaling for I believe it's 10 minutes every single day can not only change your psychological mindset but your your physical body it can change so many things and there is things like when it comes to journaling for like things like healing gratitude that they're a nice place to start mm-hmm. when you're when you're first start when you first start journaling sorry focus on one thing because yeah. I think people get overwhelmed once I got into strength within I done journal therapy and express design and so I done those courses so I could add them into the things that I do and people get really confused with where to start so start yeah. with something small so starting with things like if you need to heal something or gratitude things like that but there's many benefits to to journaling from helping you achieve goals to reducing stress to boosting your you know your working memory there's so many things there is a journal acronym I don't know if you know it there no. is a journal acronym that I could share that I guess is it's sort of like step steps basically that yeah. can help people start somewhere so the journal ac- acronym and this is when I first started doing journal, journal therapy this is why I went through the clients because it's step by step we always work better if we have a <laughs> walk through. yes so the G in journal is for judgment free so when you decide that you're going to journal it needs to be judgment free. So this is placing your thoughts, feelings, emotions on the page without judgment. This is really difficult to begin with because we instantly start judging ourselves, but over time it gets a little bit easier. 
The next one is observation. So this is observing how you're feeling when you're writing, what's coming through and just observing. So basically you're turning on that mindful observer mindset, basically. Mm -hmm. So observing. The you is understanding. This is where when you start journaling, you start to understand your triggers, your feelings, your emotions. Because you became the observer, you can see your patterns. You can see what affects you, what doesn't affect you. So again, it's the you is understanding. The R is revelation. Mm -hmm. So this is when we can hit a growth point. This is where we become more aware of how we're feeling how we work we have that more understanding with with ourselves basically so this is where the growth and if you're doing it for healing or trauma or things like that this is a pivotal yeah. moment and it will it will eventually come I know sometimes it feels like it takes forever but over time it will eventually come and again this is this is just guidelines you will spend different you know amount of time and different bits but yeah it's something to look forward to because journaling is so transformative it's mm -hmm. something you'll know because you do it <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely so much guidance so much wisdom so the n is needs assessment and this is my favorite bit because i love challenges i just i love i think you can learn so much from challenges so the n in the journal acronym <laughs> is needs assessment this is where you mindfully look so you bring maybe what you've done wrong or you bring things that need to be healed you bring all of this to the surface and decide on solutions mm -hmm. because like I've said to you before moaning doesn't change anything mm -hmm. you can be moaning you know for years and years about something it's not going to change unless yeah. you find a solution so through journaling through observing understanding you can then come to that okay so this needs to be assessed i need to change this i need to change my perception my view my reaction so that's the n in the journal acronym and then the a is awareness which we've already sort of touched on but this is you're bringing a different awareness because once you realize what needs assessed you then realize that this is how you're going to move forward so it's bringing yeah. awareness to your to your moves and the l is is life baby journaling has this amazing ability to invite you to learn to love your life to yeah. learn to live your life and enjoy life so you know it is I know that's so much information <laughs> I can write this no down. it's great it's great <laughs> so that's basically once I you could do this if you're new to journaling or you can do this if you already journal using that acronym so J is writing judgment C O is observation and take your time doing this. It's no, you know, there's no rush. The U is understanding, the R is revelation, the N is needs assessment, the A is awareness, and the L is life. And just, you know, having sort of those steps can help you start a journaling practice or change your journaling practice. Because for many people, they end up writing a diary. Mm -hmm. And journaling and diary keeping are totally two different things. And diary keeping is just you document in your mm -hmm your day your week your month it is sort of like memories yeah you just journaling. got maybe thinking about Bridget Jones there you know <laughs> yes. smoke three cigarettes weigh such and such <laughs> I love it yeah. um when journaling is obviously um it's for growth it's mm. for healing and that's why there's so many benefits to journaling because it can physically there was a when I done journal therapy my course there was a study done on people who were chronically ill mm -hmm. and they got them to to journal and it was actually changing their symptoms mm -hmm. and that blows my freaking mind how it has the power to physically change someone's symptoms when they're chronically ill mm -hmm. so it is definitely something that journaling isn't for everyone and you might agree or disagree but it can be really uncomfortable at times oh and yeah this is Mm -hmm. where if you use the acronym and you know that you have to be you know judgment free and observe be the observer of your thoughts because there's no point trying to control them because it's just a waste of your time and energy mm -hmm. and go through that it completely changes how you how you journal and what comes through from there but it is yeah it's definitely something i recommend to everyone <laughs> me too to me day. too it is for everyone just like meditation <laughs> i love it um <laughs> yeah awesome <laughs> awesome so um 
kind of uh, processing forward. So obviously people will have listened to what you've got to say today and all those things. Like what, how can people work with you? What kind of things are you offering right now um, for people to yeah. connect? Okay, so moving from strength within to joyfully live and the website and everything's getting it. So, you know, it's getting its spring makeover. So that's yeah. still under, under construction. But going forward, it's going to be joy journeys. So it'll be joy mentoring, joyful living mentoring, joy journeys. Those type, I'm gonna I'm gonna be sharing a little bit more on social media as well. I do have a personal Patreon where because what you said at the very beginning, we are multi passionate people. Yeah, I have to share everything that I love. <laughs> so totally. On Patreon, it is all that. It is astrology, spirituality, my own personal joy journey. So I yeah. have Patreon, but once the website is is up and running there will be joy journeys you know things like journals and planning on doing in-person sessions and things as well as well as online things so there will be kind of a host of things but even on social media once everything is up and running there will be you know inspiration and activations and stuff on there as well yeah I would say like give Kimmy a follow like follow Kimmy on socials I'll put all her details underneath um this conversation because she does share a lot of really inspiring supportive information I know you've got two pages on Instagram and um you've got your creative your creative <laughs> self and um you know the the coach and mentor inside the thing that you're you're building um so I would say follow both be inspired because you know life is meant to be inspiring and um yeah yeah enjoyed and Kimmy and I are also going to be doing something together so we've just set the date actually which I've turned my diary now and what did we say the 17th of June 17th of June will be the first one yeah mm-hmm. it's a Saturday and it is a joy journey and um yeah, yeah. it'll be an introduction to it won't it introduction to living joyfully and how you can bring this intentionally into your life and all the good things and there will be practices and journaling and meditation and all sorts of other amazing transformative um things to enjoy so if you want to know more about that reach out to either of us and we can get your name on the wait list and as soon as we have um the booking and further information about that up we can Mm -hmm. keep in with that and that's going to be the first of a few um joy yeah. journeys so that'll be kind of the intro um getting that conversation started isn't it and it's you'll know because we've obviously spoken about it before but you will know I love like the five p's everything I base my whole life on the five p's the passion pleasure play purpose and pause everything I do is on the five p's and when I relate it to joy mm-hmm. so when I'm obviously traveling through my own joy journey the five p's always come up and it's something that I'm really interested to add into these joy journeys is yeah. because I think it gives us meaning in life doesn't it when we are passionate about something and we feel like we've got purpose and pausing is essential for mindfulness and gratitude mm-hmm. and things so um I would definitely say to everyone to to check out as well the joy journeys are going to be awesome <laughs> you are they sure are um is there anything else you want to add before we hop off you know about I don't know anything else support tools you use for yourself or anything else that you think you might want to share with our listeners mm-hmm. watchers today I think so going back to when I was really struggling I think one of my issues was acceptance I felt like I wasn't accepted I felt unworthy of what I desire and I would say to anybody regardless of where you are in your life or what you are doing in your life that you are so worthy this is something that you know you have to do a lot of work on acceptance is really difficult but see once you get to that stage of acceptance where you are authentically you this joy journey becomes easier because you're just being yourself and I guess in the world today like I was saying to you earlier like astrologically it's crazy just now with the energy but with the world today like it can be really really heavy and I think acceptance and understanding of oneself is that it is that basically enlightenment it's the embodiment and joy is it is sort of like a a gift that comes from that acceptance as such mm. so for, yeah for anyone that is listening I just I just want you to know that we are freaking rooting for you like we love you yes. <laughs> you are awesome 
totally totally keep going it's such a journey that acceptance you know it's like today I woke up and I like and kind of felt really flat and exhausted and had had a million dreams and I was like oh my gosh and last day of my cycle and you know and all of this like I felt pretty kind of low vibe but Mm -hmm. then I'm like journaling I had a little journal (laughs) explore the situation and I wasn't trying to get from low vibe to high vibe it was that acceptance it's like okay your body's tired it's been doing a lot of work you've done a lot this weekend like Mm -hmm. love you like I still love me and I'm going to take myself in a bath and then I'll go to Pilates and then I'll have a beautiful conversation with Kimmy (laughs) and uh you know like just being accepting of where you are as opposed to Mm -hmm. where you want to be I think is so valuable and do you not find that acceptance is is closely related to control I found that my acceptance journey was based around actually my body because I had an eating disorder when I was younger. I always had a really strange relationship with my body. And once I got to that level of acceptance, physical body, mind, soul, heart, everything, I realized that the need for control or the need for perfection Mm -hmm. was starting to fall away because I was just like, I am this messy, passionate person. (laughs) it goes all all over the place and that is who I am and who I love to be and accepting that changes everything so on days where you know I may have my period or I'm not so high vibe it is like he says it's like there's no need to control it there's no need to force it to be something it's not going to be except and this is how you feel now and just mindfully move from that place of awareness it Mm -hmm. it changes everything I think it makes life a little bit easier (laughs) yeah it does it makes it more joyful because you're not fighting it yeah you're not like why are you feeling like this buck up (laughs) (laughs) it's so true so yeah definitely acceptance is is one of those things but like he says it's it's a big journey Mm -hmm. and it is um and I think you'll you might agree as well like every stage you find yourself in is a very different acceptance journey Mm -hmm. and uh, again that will close this with your joy journey like who I was when I was 21 I'm not who I am now so (laughs) my acceptance is very different (laughs) and it will move with you but once you find what works best for you and you know things like a spiritual path a holistic path or you know journaling things like that once you find something that works for you it's then using that through every phase and stage and you know acceptance is definitely something I would I would recommend for for people to work on and it's hopefully something that we can touch on in our joy joy journeys acceptance Mm -hmm. and forgiveness yeah definitely for sure two core things for joyfully uh, for joyful living because once you accept Mm -hmm. things and forgive yourself it's being joyful and choosing joy is is a lot easier yeah mm-hmm. oh this is such a great conversation and I, guess <laughs> I just want to keep going and going but you know I know people like podcasts to be a certain length but maybe we can do another one another oh, day forever. <laughs> yeah totally amazing thank um, you so much for having me my love oh no it's been so good and as I say everybody go give Kimmy a follow check out the links you can apply for her mentoring and support um and also yeah reach out to either of us if you want to go on the wait list because there's only going to be 10 spaces um for our (laughs) in-person event and um yeah I cannot wait um to yeah share that Mm -hmm. magic and energy with everybody um Cool. Well, thank you so, so much. I love you loads. Thank you, and, thank uh, you so much for having me and we will connect soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.